So, well, today we're up for a little bit of a different one. We're at my parents' farm. And the one thing I really like about going down places like farms and other old factories is the fact that you're able to see the structure underneath. So let's go and have a look in the shed and see what we can see from a structural perspective and what I look at and some lessons that we can be learning from our own designs. We'll go through several of these sheds built on this farm, both old and new. But we'll start off with one of the original shearing sheds built in the late 1800s. And over its lifetime, it's been modified to serve different purposes. And we'll be able to see this from the structure exposed underneath. But first off, before we go in there, let's have a look over here. So we've got these things that look like concrete pillars down here. Now these are actually old concrete stumps. So if we pull them up, these are what would go into the ground. It would help to put out the barriers of floor joists underneath a flooring unit. Some of these actually have numbers on them. This one here doesn't have it. But we can also see that we've got a little bit of reinforcement, so we've got a little bit of rust. You can see these are quite old and they've actually been around for quite a while. They've actually held up to the environment quite well. Now let's just move inside the shed and see what we can find. Obviously this old shed has had many revolutions over its lifetime. So this was originally a wool shed. We can see this by the pens that we've got over here, where the sheep used to go in before they shear them. And we've also got this wool press. And this old wool press is quite impressive for how long it's been around and how the wood has stand up over time. So we can see structures even out of timber can actually last a long time if they're well maintained in an area that isn't so much affected by water. So it's kept dry. It's in quite good nick. Obviously it's not so much functional anymore. The cables probably needs a little bit of work to help push it down. And just like this old shed has withstand the elements for many years don't forget to press down on that like button. But if we're looking around, we can see this has actually got new life now. So it's actually more like a story shed and an entertainment area for friends and family. But we can see some of the original structure in here, in behind all this timber. So we've got the timber studs with some backing board out of corrugated iron, quite different to the what's remaining at the top. Some odd things here we can see as well is they've got bracing, but they've made the bracing out of timber over here to brace it out as opposed to what we standard would see today is strap bracing. But also you can see there's no noggings here as well. In a modern building, you'd have a series of noggings that help reduce the effective length of the weak direction of the stud, allowing it to support more load. As the load over is relatively lightweight, only supporting a lightweight tin roof, it doesn't require these noggings. So the roof sheeting around the external edge will provide additional bracing for these studs. The roof, though it does form a truss shape, is not actually a truss, it's actually thick frame. So it's got rafters with battens and a ridge beam. So these cross members up the top here, are really in there not to really support vertical load but to stop the pitch of the roof from spreading out as the rafters are on an angle there's a diagonal force that is supplied to them so we need to pull in that force and that's restrained by the ceiling joint as we look around the place we can also see other cross struts but it seems to be very minimal so this is something we can tell from these type of buildings is how much the actual sheeting does the actual bracing we normally don't rely on it in an engineering sense but it will provide a lot of stiffness to a structure such as this Another good thing about these buildings, they're normally built with best practices from lessons they've learned over time. We actually see this in a couple of areas up around here. See these tie down straps? So originally they weren't probably in there and the building was just built on top of it as a gravity. But as it got big wind events, the roof was obviously starting to lift off. So what they've done is started to tie down to the structure to give it some additional weight to stop the building from lifting off. You can see we've actually had another. This is more of a modern addition here, this brace as opposed to the cable that's adjacent to it, as there was always had additional problems here. So by looking at structures such as this, you can see how it's progressed over time, some alterations as well. And if we look through this door, we can see this building has actually seen many lights as well. So we'll go out here, we can see we've got a more of a modern addition of the dairy farm. So we've just come out of the shearing shed, which is the original building. So if we look up here, we can see probably what's the original structure coming through. So if we look up at that raking beam, we can see that that was the original pitch of the roof and it's been modified to what we have here today. So there was obviously some sort of lean-to here that was not there previously. And obviously got the area where the sheep used to go through. But these are all in addition to what was there before. So we're stepping in through here. And once you head, we're going to a structure that looks very similar to what we had before. That's more of a modern addition to what we had. So we've got the same pitch roof. We've got the same ties across from each other. But it also looks like this may have been an 
and an extension to the building at some stage to make it into this more modern addition of what is now a dairy farm. And we've actually got a little bit of steel in combination with timber. So it's a combination of different structural elements. Another structural element is obviously fences. Now you don't think about fences very much, but they need quite big tensions to keep them taut. Otherwise the cables will sag and they need these tensioning posts. So we can see here, we've got this cross brace with a vertical strut and posts essentially out of the ground. Now the tension strut is obviously there to help keep the area taut. But in addition to that, what you'll find is a lot of time, the post will be pulled so taut that you may actually snap the top of it. So I need to brace it with a compression strut at the top to be able to share it between two posts. If we move into this shed, now this is some, a little bit of a new addition compared to the original shed that we're looking at. More modern day steel structure. Steel mullions going up to help support some of the vertical loads. And these are more wall girts, but they're more of a top hat solution. Supporting obviously off the corrugated iron. And most of this is always built up all of lightweight structures. And if we have a look up, we can see that there's knee braces as well to help brace out the structure to improve the length of it. And up in the top, they've also got that same tension type. They've got it a little bit higher, obviously to get you more height in here, you can get more storage, but you still need to be able to stop the building from spreading out. So it's only having to have fixed connections. They've got the whole A-frame stable at the top there. But looking around as well, we can see there's actually very limited cross bracing. There is some cross bracing in some corners, but it doesn't really go all the way to the roof. So again, they're mostly relying on the sheeting, providing that lateral bracing. That would provide quite a lot of rigidity in the structure like this. And I'm not sure if you know what actually happened in Gifflin recently. There was quite a big storm. The wild weather blasted the state for 24 hours, leaving Taralgon on flood alert, homes in Dandenong crushed, and emergency crews stretched to the limit. It's the biggest SES call-out in Victorian history. Hundreds of thousands of people affected statewide. Winds up to 120 kilometres an hour. Record rains of up to 300 millimetres in 24 hours. 240,000 people left without power. This building's actually seen probably what is close to its design capacity, and it's actually withstand it in quite good condition. So you see the design is actually stepped up with even very minimal cross bracing. Obviously, this is just a little bit of a different take from what we normally do, but hopefully it's giving you some insight and in what you can do when you've gone out to different buildings. I would encourage you, especially around old structures, having a look in them, having a look around it, how they're put together. What can you learn about it for structural engineering? And looking up and seeing the beauty of the elements that are normally hidden in modern day architecture.